the prophetic theme of the month is financial fortune is my heritage. Can, I, can we repeat it? As you have said in his ears, so he will do for you. In the name of Jesus. After this service, you walk into a financial fortune. Amen. Your ears will hear a word behind you. Amen. Say, my son, my daughter, this is the way, walk in it. Amen. Praise the Lord. It's also our special anointing service. Every burden of the enemy will be removed from your shoulders. Amen. Every yoke will be destroyed. Amen. They will not regard her again. Amen. In Jesus' name we pray. Teaching series for our Sunday meetings has been Gateways to Financial Fortune. Gateways to Financial Fortune. Financial fortune is possible. Praise the Lord. Now, contrary to some beliefs in some quarters, not among us, that you cannot be righteous and be rich. Praise the Lord. That doctrine is held in many places, not among us. Praise the Lord. The Bible says that the, the, the heaven is made the floor transparent gold. Praise the Lord. Jesus said, I was rich, yet for your sake I became poor. That through me you will become rich. So God has ordained us to be rich, but there are gateways to it. There are some things we begin to do and consistently do them, and we walk into fortune. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. The theme of the month, the scripture of the month is Deuteronomy 8.18. And the Bible says, But thou shalt remember the Lord thy God, for it is he that giveth thee power to get wealth, that, you, that he, God, may establish his covenant, which he swear unto our fathers as it is this day. It is God that gives us power to get wealth. Praise the Lord. Wealth is not tied to any vocation or any calling. Praise God. Otherwise, we won't have rich doctors and poor doctors. We won't have rich mechanics and poor mechanics. We won't have rich lawyers and poor lawyers. In every profession, there are rich and poor. So it's not the profession that makes rich. Is the power of God. Praise the Lord. The covenant that he swore to Abraham is still working today. Praise the Lord. In the present day Israel, they command the wealth of the world. And by covenant, by redemption, we have been tied into that same covenant. Praise the Lord. So it's God that makes that gives power to get wealth. But that power is in his covenant. Is in what we call the blessing. Galatians 5, Galatians chapter 3, verses 13 and 14. Galatians 3, 13 to 14. Christ has redeemed us from the cause of the law, being made a cause. For us, for it is written, cost is everyone that hangs on a tree. Jesus hung on a tree and collected all the causes. So what is left for his children is blessing. For you can't cause whom God has blessed. Jesus collected all the blessing. Praise the Lord. Let's say in your work table in the kitchen, there is some things that, that uh, split, and then you take a wipe and wipe it. What is left is cleanliness. Jesus took the whole courses on the cross. Praise the Lord. That the blessing of Abraham, he, he created way for the blessing. That the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Jesus Christ. That we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. Bible says in Proverbs 10, 22, that the blessing of the Lord maketh rich. And added no sorrow. As it were, for every child of God, there's a blessing that's hovering over your life. It's the blessing. Every other blessing comes from the blessing. Praise the Lord. 
we must begin to be conscious of this blessing. You remember when Isaac, his eye was dim, and he asked Esau, go to the bush and get me venison, that my soul will bless you, so that I will transfer the blessing that Abraham gave me to you as my first son. Praise the Lord. And the mother of her heart and told Jacob to go and do. When Jacob came in deception and Isaac blessed him, he gave him that same blessing that Abraham gave him. He transferred it. So when Esau came back and what happened dawned on him, he was fidgeting. Because he said, Who, that person I've blessed is already blessed. I don't have, Esau said, don't you have another blessing? Just one blessing. He thought he has transferred the blessing of the lineage to another person. That's how conscious he is of the blessing. Everything you do in life that is marvelous stems from that same blessing and is hovering over my life and over your life. But some things trigger it. Praise the Lord. Some things trigger that blessing. And those are the things you have come to learn. Praise the Lord. My admonition is when God places a demand on you, and he will, put it to practice. For nobody likes a light and puts it under a basket. Praise the Lord. Each day you come to service, you should live with a decision. Or reinforce a decision you've already made. Otherwise, you have just come to just dance and go. Praise the Lord. If God really is here, he will put a demand on you. Praise the Lord. He said, take my yoke, for my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. Praise the Lord. So, God's answer to that your prayer may be a demand. Something you begin to do today that will bless generations after you. Somebody is starting a business today. Somebody is starting a new career today. Somebody is going back to his office energized and empowered by God. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. God is busy. I'm sure you know that. In John, 3 John verse 2, he says, I wish above all things that you prosper and be in health even as your soul prospers. As busy as God is, number one on his list is your prosperity and my prosperity. But he tied it to a condition. As your soul prospers. Your soul prospers by the information he has. If your mind is loaded with the word of God, the one you can practice, not the one you load for, for argument, the one you load there for practicality, then prosperity will come. Praise the Lord. Because the word of God is the gateway. God's word is his method. God cannot do anything again that he hasn't written. God is not like a human government. That once something happens, they adjust the law. Another one happens, they adjust the law. And because they are not perfect. God wrote this word and passed it through a test 12 times. Praise the Lord. This was passed through to be sure that it can't fail under any circumstance. That is why whatever he tells you to do, do it. Praise the Lord. We must not take any scriptural discovery lightly. Because every scriptural discovery is the gateway to our inheritance. Second Peter 1 3 says, According as his divine power has given unto us all things that pertain to life and godliness, through the knowledge of him that called us to glory and virtue. God has prepared everything you need in this life for godliness and things pertaining to this world but you get them through the knowledge of Jesus Christ. You get them through the word of God. Praise the Lord. In Acts 20, 32, the Bible says, and now brethren, 
I commend you to God. But not just to God, but also to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up and give you an inheritance among them that are sanctified. It's the word of God that builds you up. It's the word of God, is the conveyor belt that brings your inheritance. So if you are a doer of the word of God, you will be blessed. Praise the Lord. The Bible says anyone that looks unto the perfect law of liberty and continues daring, him not being a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, the same shall be blessed. Praise the Lord. Don't be a forgetful hearer. Whatever you hear, put to practice. Consistently so. Not just trying God. Make up your mind that this will become the order of the day in my life from today. And then as that conveyor belt goes and comes, so comes your blessing. Bible says in the morning so, in the afternoon do not withhold your hand. For you don't know which one will prosper. Whether this or that, or whether all of them will all together prosper. Praise the Lord. The word of God must become our lifestyle. We must dig into it to discover more. So that the more we have, the more blessed we become. Praise the Lord. Hebrews 1.3 says that God upholds all things by the word of his power. Praise the Lord. Like I say, God knows chemistry. Praise the Lord. God knows every profession. God can guide you in your business. He can guide you in your career. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Scriptural discoveries are highways to our high places in life. Scriptural discoveries are our highways to our high places in life. God has designed us to be on top. He said you are a city that is set on a hill that cannot be hidden. You are the salt of the earth. Praise the Lord. You are the head and not the tail. You are above only and not beneath. That is where God has designed us to be. But some things take you there. The ladder that takes you to the very top is the word of God. Praise the Lord. I read in, uh, many years ago in Paul Young, he chose one of his books, maybe his fourth dimension or one of his books. There was a Christian doctor. His sister was brought to his clinic and then there was no, no, no proper diagnosis. Nobody knew what was wrong with her. Praise the Lord. Because what was wrong with her was not something that uh, they could see. It was something spiritual. Very minor and yet very profound. She was in, she refused to, for, for some reason, refused to forgive the brother-in-law. I don't know what the brother-in-law did. And she refused to let him go. Bible says where there is strife, there is every evil work. The devil used that opportunity and gave her, gave her a sickness that could not be diagnosed. So they brought her to this Christian doctor's clinic and based on, you know, and just wanted to operate her. And God said, if you touch her, she will die. He said, why? He said, tell her to forgive her brother-in-law. Praise the Lord. Thank God for Christian doctors. Thank God for hearing doctors. Praise the Lord. So in that your profession, you can get to the top. Digging into scriptures. God will speak to you, my daughter, this is the way. Something that has defied solution. One day you just do it all of a sudden. From where you are to directorship. God can do it. All we need to do is to put ourselves in a position to hear from God. Praise the Lord. Psalm 45 verse 3. Guard thy sword upon thy thigh almost high. With the glory and thy majesty. Verse 4, and in the majesty ride prosperously because of truth. You ride prosperously because of truth. Praise the Lord. Don't say because you are not a pastor. No, you can be a mechanic and be a, a hearing mechanic. You can be a lawyer and God will tell you what to say. Praise the Lord. Every your way to your high places is through the word of God. What is money? Praise the Lord. Now when we think of money, stop thinking about the cash, the, the paper you see with the queen's head. That is just an emblem or a symbol of money. The true money is the exchange of goods and services. The more of your service you render, the more you'll be rich. 
Now they mark up, I don't know how much Coca-Cola mark up on one Coke. Maybe not up to 5p. But they sell millions of it. Praise the Lord. So God can give you an idea that you sell to millions and millions of people. Praise the Lord. How long will it take God to tell you? It doesn't take anything. Just be in the position to hear from God. Praise the Lord. So you must not take scriptural discovery lightly. God can turn my destiny and your destiny overnight if we put ourselves in a position for God to whisper to us. Somebody can develop a formula today that will wipe out every other competitor just overnight. Praise the Lord. So riches, God can, is all within the power of God. Praise the Lord. It is God that gives us power to get wealth. Deuteronomy 28 verse 1 says, And it shall come to pass, if you shall hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe and to do all his commandments, which I command thee this day, that the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all nations of the earth. God doesn't put a cap on somebody's destiny. Imagine where you are today to being on top of nations. Very wide gap. Praise the Lord. He told Abraham, come, look to the north, look to the south, look to the east and west. The land which your eyes see, I will give to you. His physical eyes couldn't see all. But he's in his imagination, in his mind's eye, Anything he captured, Mike Mudok said, whatever happens in the mind, happens in time. Our father in the Lord said, life drifts in the direction of thought. Let your mind capture it. You will walk into it soon. Yes. Praise the Lord. So imagine where you are today, or where I am today, to sitting on top of nations. Wide gap. There's so much room for promotion. So no matter where you are, there's still room for improvement. And all it takes is God. According to Pastor Gemma, it doesn't take time. It only takes God. But put yourself in the position where God can reach you. He says, you will hear a word behind you say, my son, this, my daughter, this is the way walking it. The voice is behind. So you must be keen to hear it. You must be sensitive enough to hear it. Praise the Lord. So we live in a kingdom that delivers according to the to, to as far as our eyes can see, as far as our eyes can see, as far, he says in Isaiah 51 verses 1 to 3, say, hearken to me, ye that follow after righteousness. He's, he's not talking to everybody. He's talking to those that follow after righteousness. Those that seek the Lord like you and me. Look unto the rock from where you were hewn, and look unto the hole from where you were digged. Look unto Abraham your father, unto Sarah, that bear you. And I, for I called him alone and blessed him and increased him. It's God that increased Abraham. God blessed Abraham. God increased Abraham. So look unto Abraham. If you are Abraham's children, you will do the works of Abraham. Praise the Lord. Abraham was willing to look north, south, east, and west. There's a few other things that Abraham did which we are coming to, to look at. So look at the rock from where you were caught. Look from the hole from where God digged you from. Look to Sarah, your mother that bear you. And whatever you see, do. Whatever you see, then do, replicate. And the God that bless them will bless you. The God that increase them will increase you. In the name of Jesus. Where we are today was far, is far better than where Abraham started from. At 75, God said, him, leave where you are to a place I will show you. An uncertain future, where? I will show you. And you left at 75? There's, there's, our case is so different, so better than where Abraham started from. If Abraham could live at 75 to where God hasn't even told him, praise the Lord, then we don't have any excuse. Not to put what God has said to practice. If Mary could believe something that's completely unnatural, something that has never happened before, that a virgin will take in and give back to a child, if she can believe, me and you don't have any excuse not to do what God has said. All we, we ask God is for grace to put it to practice. What is a covenant therefore? 
A covenant is a deal that is enacted by God based on well-defined terms that is sealed with an oath. I'll take that again. A covenant is a deal that is enacted by God based on well-defined terms and sealed with an oath. Praise the Lord. Those terms is the word of God. I'll read Hebrews chapter 6. Hebrews chapter 6, verses 13 to 18. Hebrews 6, 13 to 18. Praise the Lord. Now it says, so when God made promise to Abraham, because he could swear by no greater, he swore by himself, saying, surely, blessing, I will bless thee, and multiplying, I will multiply thee. And so, after Abraham had patiently endured, he obtained the promise. For men verily swear by a greater. Praise the Lord. You know when you are telling your friend and then they are trying to disbelieve, you say, trust me, where I come from, you swear. Once you swear, they will know you are serious. That's men. For men verily swear by a greater. An oath for confirm confirmation is to them the end of all strife. Wherein God also willing more abundantly to show to the heirs of promise the immutability of his counsel confirmed it by an oath. Praise the Lord. The word of God doesn't mutate. Word of God doesn't divide. For example, if you leave a three-year-old child and travel and come back 15 years later, you will meet a man. Praise the Lord. Because his cells would have divided and he would have grown. This, the boy you or the girl you left is not the person you are meeting after 15 years. You are meeting a man with beard. Hallelujah. But leave the word of God here and travel for 50 years and back. You meet it the same state that you left it because it doesn't mutate. It doesn't divide. Praise the Lord. It is a fixed term. Praise the, just listen, 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 listen. It is a, is, is a statute that doesn't change. You know statute? Maybe there's one in your place and it's smiling when you left under rain. When you come back, it, it can be on fire and still be smiling. Because it's a statute. The word of God is a statute that doesn't change. So you can build your life on it. The word of God is not sinking sand. Praise the Lord. So God has on the, as solid as the word of God is, God further reinforces it by swearing that this covenant will not change. That's how sure the word of God is. There is no man that can give you that kind of assurance. Praise the Lord. No man has that kind of power. No man has that kind of power to give you assurance. That level of assurance. Psalm 89 verse 34. My covenant will I not break. No, alter the thing that is gone out of my mouth. Men may alter the things they say. Maybe they say, I will give you 5,000 pounds, and then when you come back, conditions have changed. I say, that thing I promise, I'm sorry. I will give you half or one quarter, or maybe next year. Praise the Lord. Not his fault, because his power is limited. But God's power is unlimited. So when God enters a covenant with you, be sure it's going to happen. Praise the Lord. So what is a covenant? A promise. God says, do this, and you do your part, you have turned that promise to a covenant. Once you do your part, God is duty-bound to do his own. Praise the Lord. We must also recognize that when we are giving, we are not doing financial donation. You can donate to Cancer Research UK. You can donate to British Red Cross. You can donate to Save the Children because their resources are limited. They can thank you and write you a letter that without people like you, we fold up. Praise the Lord. But God can write you such letter. God doesn't need it. You need God to climb. Your offering you are giving to God is to abound to your account so that you can rise. It's a privilege given to God. Now, when you see a very poor person, you can disdain them 
and throw whatever you are giving them on the floor. That, you shouldn't do that, but people have done it, and then they still pick it and say thank you because they don't know when the next one is coming from. But have you tried to give a rich man a gift? First of all, they won't even give you the opportunity. You will kneel down with your tunis and say, please accept this. It's not an, please accept this. You'll be begging them to accept a gift. Praise the Lord. So you can't help God. God is too big to be helped. The cattle on a thousand hills, listen, the cattle on a thousand hills belong to him. The silver is his and the gold is his. Praise the Lord. It's out of his abundance he has given you. That's the one you're returning. Praise the Lord. So don't brag before God. Don't think that without you, the church can move. No. It's a wrong orientation. And I'm sure nobody here has that kind of orientation. If you have it, let it end today. Praise the Lord. Hosea chapter 2 verse 7. He says, I will shake all the nations, and the desire of all the nations shall come. And I will fill this house with glory, saith the Lord of hosts. The silver is mine, and the gold is mine, saith the Lord. Praise the Lord. God owns every money in this world. It may not look like it. Some of those don't have money and be bragging. Praise the Lord. The devil only needs to give them one sickness, and that money will exchange hand. Praise the Lord. The devil only needs to put one heartache in their life, and that whole money can be wiped out under one week and goes to a Christian doctor. Praise the Lord. They only need to have one case, one serious case, that you will charge them all their life belongings, and we go to a Christian lawyer. Praise the Lord. God has command of the whole world in this world. He will reign from heaven because we'll be counterfeit. But the ones here, he has power to take it. He has power to suck it out from every avenue and channel it to you. Praise the Lord. He can put something in the plot of land you have bought and somebody will discover there's something there. They say, how much? You say, all your belongings for that piece of land. Praise the Lord. And after buying it, God can remove it. <laughs> Praise the Lord. He has the power. There was a year, many years ago, God told um, the man of God, uh, Kenneth Copeland, to buy one piece of land. It didn't look like either him or my mother, one of those. Swampy area that didn't look nice to the natural eyes. But they bought it and later found that there was a natural gas in that place. You don't know what God has put there. Praise the Lord. God is the one that gives power to get wealth. But we must be in a position to hear from God. What are the practical terms? What are the things that we need to do? And begin to do and consistently do it to put us in a position. Number one is tithing. To tithe, that is the key to a world of financial fortune. Praise the Lord. You read Malachi chapter 10, chapter 3, verse 10 to 18. Say, bring ye, say, you have robbed me, all you whole nation. Say, how have we robbed you? In tithes and all, because all the things belong to God. That's why he said, if you don't give me that 10%, you have robbed me. It's not a lie. Praise the Lord. The earth belongs to the Lord and the fullness thereof. He says, you have robbed me in tithes and offerings. He said, bring ye all the tithes in my stock. I said, that there be meat in my house and prove me. If I will not give you, open up to you the windows of heaven and pour you blessing, a blessing that you won't find room enough to keep it. Praise the Lord. Now, the people that have cars, do they park it in their house? Praise the Lord. Do you park your car in your sitting room? It's a blessing that your room can't contain. Some have planes. They don't even park it near where they live. The blessing is so much that that neighborhood can't contain it. Praise the Lord. He will pour you out a blessing that they, you won't find room to place it. But you must begin to bring your tithe. Don't bring your tithe to try God. They say, I should be my, let me try you. No. You do it as a lifestyle. Praise the Lord. A little boy here many years ago came here and gave a testimony. Or maybe the mom gave it on his behalf. Say, God, if you give me admission to a grammar school, I will give you something. He mentioned that thing. But later I changed it. He said, even if you don't give me, I will still give you the same offering. Praise the Lord. 
and God gave him the grammar school. See, your, my, my attitude and your attitude should be, not God, if they, I give you, let me watch. No. Whether you keep it or not, I will still do it. And we know that God can lie. When you have that kind of resolve, that's when the window opens. You don't give to a rich man conditionally. You keep it if you want. Praise the Lord. God, God doesn't need it. You give it to him as a privilege. They ask our, our bishop, what do you do between when you sow and when you reap? He said, I've never thought of it. Because I'm giving because I love him. Whatever he wants to do, let him do. Praise the, you can't be more faithful than God. So stop giving to God conditionally. Another avenue is giving to us kingdom advancement. Luke chapter 7, verses 1 to 4. Luke chapter 7, verses 1 to 4. He said, Now when he had ended all his sayings in the audience of the people, he entered into Capernaum, and a certain centurion servant who was dear unto him was sick and ready to die. And when he heard of Jesus, he sent unto Jesus the elders of the Jews, beseeching him that he would come and heal his servant. And when the elders came to Jesus, they besought him instantly, saying that he was worthy of whom he should do this. What made him worthy? Verse 5. For he loveth our nation and has built us a synagogue. He, he, this centurion, centurion is a soldier that is seconded to Israel, probably from Italy. Those days, the Roman Empire used to uh, rule the whole world. Probably from, I, I believe so, from Rome. So he was a stranger to the covenant. But he loved them. The people he came to meet, he loved them. And proved his love by building them a synagogue. Praise the Lord. And that made him worthy of whatever he was asking of Jesus. Yours, you may not be in the position to build God a church, but you may be in the position to put 10 pounds towards the carpeting of his house. You may be in the position to buy a roll of tissue paper for his toilet. Praise the Lord. You may, you may be in the position to just climb up and remove a cobweb that you see to decorate his house. Praise the Lord. But you must give to the kingdom, advancement of God's kingdom. That puts you in a, in a worthy position to receive anything that you ask for God. No wonder God said we shouldn't come before him empty-handed. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. If you read Acts chapter 10, you will see another centurion. There's something about these centurions. They are soldiers. One came to Jesus and said, I am not worthy that you come into my house, but speak the word only, and my servant will be healed. For I'm a man under authority. I say to one soldier, go, and he goes, and I say to one, come, and he comes. Jesus said, if, not even in Israel, I've not seen, seen such a fate. Because they are under command. They are under authority. If you are under the authority of the word of God, there is nothing you cannot access. Praise the Lord. There is nothing you cannot access if you are under authority. So, one day, God sent his angel to go and meet Cornelius. He said, your prayer and your arms have come to me as a memorial. Praise the Lord. He gives arms to the people regularly. And he prays to God regularly. And God brought salvation to him. By his offering and his prayers, salvation came to the Gentiles. Praise the Lord. By the prayer and the love and the giving of Cornelius, that's how the scriptures or the gospel came to us. There is something you begin to do today. And your lineage will begin to say there was a, a, a grandfather a great grandfather, and they will begin to bless God for you. Amen. That you, because of your, your righteous works, these blessings have come upon us. Praise the Lord. God told that man, go and tell the children of, uh, what is it called? Bring them to come and drink wine. And they brought them. They said, drink wine. He said, no, our grandfather told us not to drink wine. He told us not to build a house. 
we live in tents. And God will say, can't I do the same thing with the children of Israel? And he blessed that lineage and said there will no, not, there, a time will not come when a man from that family will not stand before me forever. Praise the Lord. What are the benefits of this kingdom covenant practice? Number one, he averts causes and plagues. In Genesis chapter 8, verse 20 to 24, after the flooding and all every man died, Noah and his family were left. When they came out of the ark, they took from every clean beast and every clean fowl and sacrificed to God. And God smelt a good salvo. And God said, from today, I will not destroy the earth because of man, even though his ways are evil. Praise the Lord. That's why when one heavy rain wants to fall, when God sees the rainbow, he will remember the covenant. Praise the Lord. All by the sacrifice of one Noah. Praise the Lord. Safety. The, the world would have been flooded over and over again. God gave the sea the boundary. When heavy rain that will overflow all of us wants to come, rainbow will come. And God will remember his covenant. Because he's not a covenant breaker, he will withhold himself. He will tell that rain, stop there. Praise the Lord. All because of one sacrifice of one man. Everything you need in your life and you will ever need is tied to giving. This is one of those. David in Israel, plague was going on. People were dying. In 2 Samuel 24, 24. And then an angel of God appeared to David and directed him. And he went to the man, the Aruana, and said he will buy his uh, threshing floor so he can do sacrifice to God. He said, no, take. Free. Take everything. He said, no. I will not give to God what doesn't cost me anything. So he bought it in 2 Samuel 24, 24 and 25. And verse 25 says, And David built an altar unto the Lord and offered burnt offerings and peace offerings. So the Lord was entreated for the land and the plague stayed. The plague ceased. Praise the Lord. If an offering can stop a plague, then it can stop anything. Number two benefit, giving engenders divine health. Giving engenders divine health. Psalm 41, verses 1 to 3. Blessed is he that considereth the poor. The Lord will deliver him in time of trouble. The Lord will preserve him and keep him alive. He shall be blessed upon the earth, and thou shalt not deliver him unto the wheels of enemy. The Lord will strengthen him upon the bed of languishing, and thou will make thy his bed in sickness. God doesn't take, doesn't joke with the poor. There are some category of people that God doesn't joke with. God, God doesn't joke with a widow. God doesn't joke with the fatherless. God doesn't joke with the orphan. God doesn't joke with the poor. Praise the Lord. They may, they not, they may not be in the position to believe God. That's why he has you and me. If you consider the poor, the Lord will take sickness away from us. Praise the Lord. He will make his bed in sickness. That means that you can't make a bed when somebody's lying on it. That means that God will heal you when you take off the sick and make the bed. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Now look at what John 15 verse 2 says. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. But every branch that beareth fruit, he purges it that he might bring more fruit. Praise the Lord. Don't see the poor and look away. Take care of them. And the Lord will take sickness away from you. Praise the Lord. There was a story told of Ora Roberts when he was a young man. He was uh, dying and he told his mother, my tithe is in my suit pocket. Go and take it to church. I don't want to get to heaven owing God. Praise the Lord. And God healed him miraculously. Praise the Lord. John D. Rockefeller also had a story like that. At around 53, he was dying. And he divided all his resources and gave half 
away and God healed him. He lived to be 93 years old. There is something about giving that takes sickness and disease away. Number three, giving secures divine protection. Secures divine protection. Psalm 20 verse 1 to 3. The Lord hear thee in the day of trouble. The name of the Lord of Jacob defend you. Send you help from the sanctuary. Strengthen you out of Zion. Remember all your offerings and accept your bond sacrifices. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. In the day of trouble, your giving will answer. Number four, giving engenders longevity. Exodus 23, 25 to 26. And ye shall serve the Lord your God, and ye shall, he shall bless thy bread and thy water. He said, and he will take sickness away from you. There shall nothing cast their young, nor be barren in the land. The number of your days I will fulfill. Praise the Lord. There won't be any infant death again in our midst. Everyone's days God will fulfill. All by serving God with your means. You must realize that the devil is a bad negotiator. Praise the Lord. He told the children of Israel, with, after so many miracles, okay, go and serve your God like you have said, but go to the wilderness. Don't go far. They said, no, we'll go far. The next time, say, okay, go. Don't go with your children. He said, no, we'll go with our children. He was still negotiating. You can go with your children, but don't go with your cattle. Don't go with your means. He said, no, we'll go with all of them. We don't know which one God will want. See, the devil keeps negotiating your liberty. Go to church, serve him. That, that church, they talk about money too much. Don't give them your money. He's negotiating your liberty. Praise the Lord. If you have a plague, an offering will cure it. And sickness, offering will cure it. Divine protection, offering will cure it. What else do you want in life? Long life, offering will give it to you. Anything contrary to this is negotiating one's liberty. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Number five, he secures supernatural fruitfulness. Sarah was barren. And one day, God had enough for Sodom and Gomorrah. Their sin has risen up to heaven. And God sent three angels to go and destroy them. Praise the Lord. And on their way, they were passing in front of Abraham's house. They didn't branch, they didn't greet. But Abraham thought, where, where are they coming from in this wilderness? They, they must need water. And beckoned on them to come. And they came, said, drink water. While you're drinking, he hurried his people. Go and do whatever they are doing. Kill this animal, do this, and brought food. It's complete strangers that didn't even ask for the food. And they ate. Praise the Lord. And you remember Isaac, after eating that venison, he poured out his blessing. So after eating, they blessed Abraham. And said, by this time of year, Sarah will have a child. Praise the Lord. All by entertaining strangers. Praise the Lord. After what Abraham did, the saying entered the Bible, do not forget to entertain strangers. For by so doing, some have entertained angels on our ways. Praise the Lord. Now, do you think, just think about it like, like a normal human being. If you are not used to giving, will you see strangers that are passing on their own? They didn't ask you, will you come then to come and eat? No way. Abraham was already in the habit of giving. Praise the Lord. That day he gave what brought Isaac. Maybe you think it's a coincidence. Let's read 2 Kings chapter 4. 2 Kings chapter 4. The story of a Shunammite woman. 2 Kings chapter 4. Verse 8. And it fell on a day that Elisha passed by Shunem, where was a great woman. 
And she constrained, listen to the word, she constrained, that means Elisha didn't want to enter. She constrained him, just like Abraham constrained the angels. She constrained him to eat bread. And so it was, that as often as he passed by, he turned in there and ate bread. And she said unto the husband, Behold, now I perceive that this is an holy man of God. So she wasn't doing it because she knew that Elijah was a man of God. After many times of Elijah coming and going, she now dawned on him that this man might be a man of God. Praise the Lord. So as far as she was concerned, she was doing it to a stranger. Praise the Lord. Behold, I now perceive that this is a holy man of God, which passed by us continually. Let us make a little chamber, I pray thee, on the wall, and let us set for him there a bed, and a table, and a stool, and a candlestick, that it shall be when he cometh to us, he shall turn in there and stay. And he fell on a day that he came thither, and turned into the chamber, and lay there. And he said to Gehazi, call this woman, ask her what does she want. Does she want us to speak to the king on her behalf? The woman said, no, I live among my people. In other words, I don't have any need. And Gehazi said, verse 14, what then is to be done for her? And Gehazi said, verily she had no child, and her husband is old. And he said, call her. And when he had called her, she stood by the door, in the door, and he said, by this season, according to the time of life, thou shalt embrace a son. Praise the Lord. So give him. Can secure supernatural fruitfulness. Praise the Lord. Bible says in the mouth of two or three witnesses, every word shall be established. He did it for Sarah. He did it for the Shunammite woman. So if you do what they did, it's not according to size. The Shunammite woman was in the position to build a room for him. You might not be able to build a room for him. Yours might be just be one P. Praise the Lord. Give it cheerfully. Give it to who needs it. With all your heart. And watch God. If he's a respecter of persons, then what he did for them, he won't do for you. But if he's not, he will do the same thing. Praise the Lord. So, plague can be removed big offering. Sickness can go. Divine protection can come. What else? Longevity come. Supernatural fruitfulness. Tell me what else you need in life that offering cannot deliver to you. Praise the Lord. Finally, number six, he secures posterity. We read in Call to Worship, Psalm 112. Psalm 112. No wonder the God of love says, don't come before me empty-handed. Because just like Paul said, I'm not looking for what I can get from you. I'm looking for what will abound to your account. Every born has an account in heaven. From where you can draw, your account here can only give you money. But in heaven's account, there is antidote for plague, for sickness. Different protection is there. Longevity is there. Supernatural fruitfulness is there. The security of posterity is there. A seed shall serve me. And you are counted for a generation. Praise the Lord. Psalm 112, verse 1 and 2. Praise ye the Lord. Blessed is the man that feared the Lord, that delighted greatly in his commandments. His seed shall be mighty upon the earth. The generation of the upright shall be blessed. Praise the Lord. Your generation is, will be blessed. Because of your covenant work. So when God says give, don't come before me empty handed. Don't look at yourself alone. Look at the generation coming after you. There's a woman in Ken Higgins ministry. 
very poor. Kept three cleaning jobs to make ends meet. That will tell you how meager her finances were. Three cleaning jobs. Otherwise, she won't, her needs won't be met. But one day, she went to church and heard preaching about tight. And she brought her tight to the man of God those days and gave it to Ken Hagen knew her. Knew she needed every money in her account or in her purse. And tried to talk her out of giving the tithe. And God said, because God is a God of covenant. If you don't take that tithe, you keep her where she is forever. You keep her in her state. Reluctantly, the man of God took it and blessed her. And at the time of writing the book that I read it from, some of her children have become the most educated in the U.S. So that title you are giving is not just for you. There's a generation coming after you. God will not only bless you, you bless them. Amen. Praise the Lord. Do you know what he talked about Abraham? I know him. He will command his household to follow him. The things that will children learn more about examples, not necessarily what you tell them to do. Sit down and keep doing what you're asking them to do. They will learn better. Praise the Lord. So these are the things that offering can give. Praise the Lord. Anything outside this, there is nothing that all your needs are here. Praise the Lord. All your needs are here. And you have what it takes to contact everything on this list. All God needs is your willingness to give it. Not the size, but your willingness. Praise the Lord. And as you keep doing it, the Lord of heaven will give you peace round about. In the mighty name of Jesus. Let's be on our feet and ask God for grace for practical application. Nobody lights a light and puts it under a basket. God would have wasted his time if you were here and not implement what you have heard. There's nobody, everyone that looks at the perfect law of liberty and continues there, not being a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, the same shall be blessed. Ask God for grace to apply everything you have heard today. And I'm sure God has spoken to you one or two things. He has put a demand on your life. Ask God for grace to implement them. Ask God for grace to implement them. I started paying my tithe as a student. Praise the Lord. Many years ago, how much would the tithe of a student be? But I paid it all the same. One day when I started working, and then after a few months, I have not bought this, I have not bought that, the devil whispered to my ears, true story. If that tithe you're paying, if you stop paying, you buy this, you buy that. I stopped where I was working. I said, God, let that evil not befall me. Praise the Lord. To me, it's an evil. Praise the Lord. A student, if a student can pay tight, you, a worker, you have more than what to do. The grace to continue what you have had, that grace is upon you now in the name of Jesus. But God will not take anything from the wicked. Anyone that is not a child of God, God reckons you as a wicked person. God is angry with the wicked every day. But you are here to hear what you have heard. To, for God to begin to change your life, for your offering to begin to bring out these things you have enumerated in your life, you need to be a child of God. Otherwise, that offering will be wasted. So if you have never given your life to Jesus before, or perhaps you have given to him your life and you backslid and started doing your own thing, now that you're here and you've heard this, God is nudging you to come back. If you are in that category, or you've never belonged to, you've never given your life to Christ, be, to Christ before, if you belong to any of those two categories, can I see your hand raised up? Everywhere, please come forward if you have raised your hand. Don't be ashamed. If you declare for God openly, God will give you an open blessing. If you declare for God openly, God will give you an open blessing. Please come, don't be ashamed of him. Come and give your life to Jesus. So that your offerings, 
we go to God as a memorial. Don't let the devil tell you you can do it in your home. Come forward. Church, clap for them as they come. Please come forward. Come forward quickly. Lord, I give you. Come forward quickly. You are the only one left. Others have come to give their life to Jesus. You are the only one left. I don't want to scare you, but you may not have another opportunity. Please come and give your life to Jesus. I'm not asking you to receive me. I'm asking you to receive Jesus. Come quickly. I'll give you a few seconds. Don't think it's coincidental that you're here. God has ordered your step. Somebody may have invited you, but I tell you, God brought you here. Those of us in front, can we put our hand on our chest as a sign of surrender and then repeat after me. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus, I say that I'm a sinner. I say that I can't save myself. Only Jesus can save me. Jesus, come into my heart today and make me a new person. Let your hand rest upon me from today forward. In Jesus' name I pray. Let me pray for you. Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you for bringing my brothers and my sister. Thank you for nudging them to come out and accept Jesus. Father, today is that certain day in their lives that everything will turn around for good. In the name of Jesus. Father, like they have prayed, let your hand rest upon them. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Please turn and face our brother and you follow our brother. We'll give you just a little information. Church, put your hand together for them. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Today is our special anointing service. The anointing of God is a mystery. No matter how much you know God, some things about God will remain a mystery. So that you can be walking by faith and not by sight. Please take your seats for a few moments. That oil you have brought will be blessed today and turned into a holy anointing oil. What is in the holy anointing oil? The healing power of God. In James chapter 5, verse 14, the Bible says, Is any sick among you? Let them call for the elders of the church and let them pray over them, anointing them with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith shall save the sick, and the Lord shall raise him up. And if he has committed sins, God will forgive him. Praise the Lord. So the healing power of God will be in that oil as soon as he's blessed. What else will be there? The yoke-destroying power of God. We have an enemy called the devil. He's everywhere. He's loose, doing all manner of evil. Puts yoke in people's life. But thank God that God has an antidote for those yoke. In Isaiah chapter 10, verse 27, the Bible says, And it shall come to pass in that day that his burden shall be taken away from off your shoulder. And his yoke from off your neck. And the yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing. Therefore, there's a yoke destroying power of God that will be in the oil. What else? Number three. The liberating power of God. In Isaiah chapter 61, verses 1 to 3. The Bible says, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. Because the Lord has anointed me to preach the good tidings unto the meek. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, 
to proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of prison to them that are bound, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God and to comfort them that mourn in Zion. Praise the Lord. So that oil, the liberating power of God will be there. Perhaps there's a gate, there's a door of opportunity that you have been knocking and knocking and knocking and it doesn't seem to be giving way. Today, that anointing will destroy that door. Yeah. Let's be on our feet and take that oil up. If you don't have any, let your neighbor put some in your palm and declare after me. This is the holy anointing. Let me pray over it and then we declare. Father, in the name of Jesus, I declare every oil in this house as holy anointing oil. Yeah. This mystery you gave to your son, our Father in the Lord, Bishop David Oyedebo. He's been working miraculous things in his hand. We are part of the same body. In fact, we are his children. Lord, as he's working in his hands, let it work in the hands of everyone here. In the name of Jesus. That all this oil is turned to the holy anointing oil. In the mighty name of Jesus. So, dear, say with me, this oil contains the healing power of God. This oil in my hands contains the yoke destroying power of God. This oil in my hands carries the liberating power of God. This oil in my hand, as I apply it, the Spirit of God will come upon me. Like he came upon David. God doesn't have two spirits. Just one spirit. The same spirit that worked on David. That worked on Jesus. Is upon this oil. And when I anoint myself. Or anoint whatever I want to anoint. The spirit of God takes over. All that I believe put a little of that oil on your on your finger and anoint your head and begin to declare what liberty you want, what yoke you want destroyed, what healing you desire. Begin to declare, begin to declare, begin to declare, begin to declare what healing you want effected what yoke you want destroyed? What doors you want opened? What liberty you want to walk into? In the name of Jesus. Father, I thank you. Lord, I give you praise. In the name of Jesus. There is something else that is in the oil. According to Matthew chapter 3, verse 11 and 12. John the Baptist was saying, I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance. But he, talking about Jesus, that cometh after me is mightier than I, whose shoes I am not worthy to bear. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire, whose fan is in his hand, and he will thoroughly purge his floor and gather the wheat to the garner and the chaff he will burn with unquenchable fire. Every child of God is the temple of God. So if me and you are the temple of God, so we are God's floor. He will wipe us, wipe every evil away from the floor. Amen. You are cooking in the kitchen and the table, work table, and then something spill, and you use the tissue and wipe it. That thing is gone. God will wipe every evil from your body. Amen. Every sickness, everything that God hasn't planted in you, God is going to wipe it up. Amen. God is going to thoroughly purge his floor. Amen. To do that, we are going to take a shot of that anointing oil. All that believe, take a little of that oil and, and take a shot of it. In the name of Jesus. Now begin to appreciate God. Thank him for that liberty. Thank him for that open door. Take him for that sickness that is gone and never to come back again. 
The pharaohs you see today, you don't see them anymore. Father, we thank you. Lord, we give you praise. In the mighty name of Jesus. Praise the Lord. Now, put your hand together for the Lord and take your seat. Now, there are a few people that are worshiping with us for the first time on a Sunday morning. We like to acknowledge you and give you the blessing of the house. So if today is your first time on a Sunday morning, please can I ask you to stand up? Hallelujah. You're clapping for Jesus, making louder. There are kingdom friends around you. They will give you a gift and ask you to do one or two things. Please kindly oblige them. Praise the Lord. Why that is going on, I'd like to reemphasize a few announcements. Praise the Lord. While you were coming into the auditorium, you were handed over a form for Kingdom Growth Squads. If you have ticked the squad you want to belong to, kindly hand over the papers to the ushers, and God will bless you as you do so. Praise the Lord. Next Sunday is our end of month Thanksgiving and baby dedication. Like that one leper, we are all going to come back and thank God for his faithfulness all through the month. Praise the Lord. Next Sunday is our water baptism, 25th of um, August, after the third service. Every child of God, if you haven't been baptized by a Martian, bring a change of clothing and you'll be baptized in our youth center. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Midweek service is on Wednesday, 21st of August. We wait on the Lord and fast and we'll come and pray. Time is 6.30 p.m. Now the Teens Church is presenting a program called Illuminate 2019. <laughs> Hallelujah. It's an annual variety program that is captioned made in his image. The date is Saturday, the 24th of August. Time is 2.30 p.m. Venue is here in the main auditorium. Admission is free, but please register on Eventbrite. Praise the Lord. Youth Ignite is presenting their first career mentorship program. This church is blessed with people that have made some mark in their careers and businesses. And it's their duty to mentor the coming generation. So we are asking employers, employees, HR personnel to, to come for the event. Praise the Lord. It's taking place on Friday, the 23rd of August, 2019, here in the main auditorium. Time is 7 p.m. Please don't miss it for anything. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Also, Wolfby is um, for the junior Wolfby is continuing tomorrow, both the basic and the advanced courses. It continues tomorrow and we end on Friday, Saturday, 24th of August. But the leadership diploma course, LDC, is starting tomorrow. So if you have not registered, please meet us near the elder desk. We we'll have an induction after this service. If you have not registered, it's not too late. You can come and register. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Now, the marriage committee of the church is having, we are doing a marriage seminar on the 24th of August, 2019, between 11 a.m. and 2 p.m. here in the main auditorium. People, are, you are encouraged, if you haven't done so already, to register on Eventbrite in the foyer as you're going out, in the Dickens board, and in the protocol desk. Praise the Lord. The theme of the seminar is fundamental ingredients for a successful home. Praise the Lord. Like we said in the first two services, anywhere you travel to, any business you go, any trip you undertake, you will still come back home. Praise the Lord. And you want a conducive home. No matter how long you've been married, come and you hear what we add to your marriage. If you haven't married, everybody's invited. You are in a relationship, come. You are not in a relationship, come. And as you come, God will bless you. There's a short clip that we want to watch. And please 
play the studio will play it Major ingredients. Yes. Yeah, definitely. I think it's an important part of getting to know each other. Absolutely, agree. Hallelujah. Please help me ask your neighbor have you registered? Praise the Lord. Crash facility will be available. Nothing is too strong to keep you away. Bible says that marriage is honorable. You will find honor in your own. In the mighty name of Jesus. Then finally, the, the recommended books of the months are there in your bulletin. If you don't have any bulletin, the details are here. If you have, don't have any, indicate and the ushers will give you one. Now let's stretch forth our hand towards the Chronicles of Miracles. God has given some of our brethren miracles. Let's stretch forth this, your hand and bless it and send it forth to mankind for blessing in the name of Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus, the testimonies you have given our brethren replicate same in the life of everyone that won them in the mighty name of Jesus. Use it to bless mankind. In Jesus' name we pray. Now let's be on our feet and begin to appreciate God for everything he has done for you today. God has blessed you. God has brought you to here and to give you the key to your financial fortune. He has given you the grace to apply what you have heard. Appreciate him. Thank him. Don't take for granted what you have heard. Bible says the angels of God desire to hear what you are hearing. Father, we thank you. Lord, we give you praise. In the mighty name of Jesus. Go in peace. The God you have come to seek goes ahead of you to make every crooked way straight. He goes with you. He comes behind you to be your rear guard. In the name of Jesus. As you go forth, you will break through in business, in your career, in your family life. Your children will break through. In the name of Jesus. God has destroyed every yoke in your life. Those yokes will no longer surface in the life of Jesus' name. The pharaohs you see today, you will no longer see them. That interview you are going will end as a testimony. In the name of Jesus. Finally, those doors of opportunities have been opened today. In the name of Jesus. Father, I thank you. Lord, I give you praise. Go in peace. The God of this commission goes with you. In the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. Lord, we give you praise. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Now let's share the goodness. Surely, God's goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. Peace. I have dominion. And I take dominion. Congratulations. Please congratulate your neighbor and God bless you.